Dear friends, dear urologists from all over the globe, welcome to this interview for Eurolats. Um, I'm very glad to welcome Dr. Ethan from Australia. Glad to have you. Thank you, Giuseppe, for having me. Um, we have an extraordinary expert here <laughs> on one hot topic in the field of LATS due to BPH, which are the uh, minimal invasive treatment options that entered the field in recent years. And um, uh, Dr. Epen will discuss with us why they, they are sometimes considered the super pills of BPH treatment. So what's your point on that? Uh, yeah, Giuseppe, it's a really interesting topic, isn't it? Because uh, last due to BPH is so common, it affects so many of our patients. And, um, you know, we've, we've had the old tradition of, of kind of seeing a patient, watching their symptoms, then trying a medical therapy. And then when it doesn't work, we try another medical therapy, we rejig things, and we wait quite a bit until eventually they have surgery. Um, but we know that BPH is not a benign disease. It's a progressive disease. It causes a, a lot of impact on, their, on patients' quality of life. Um, and it can lead to complications and even bladder dysfunction if it's not treated um, appropriately. Um, and a lot of people don't want to be on medical treatments. You know, they cause Absolutely. a lot of side effects. Um, there's long-term uh, side effects. We know that monotherapy doesn't really halt the progression of disease, so patients really need to be on combination therapy. And then there's the additive side effects of two tablets and polypharmacy in older patients. So although we traditionally look to minimally invasive therapies as an alternative to TERP, um, you know, to prevent the complications of TERP, I really think it needs to be brought, you know, more to the first line option uh, and really uh, give patients a, sort of a one day definitive treatment uh, that hopefully will, will help their symptoms, provide fast symptom relief uh, and even if it only helps for a few years, um, it, it may be preferable to taking a medication every day. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is an important point, uh, the gap between medication and those classic um, surgical treatment is filled with these new treatment options and when we talk about these treatment options what exactly are we talking about? Can you name a few and maybe your own experience with it? Yeah, I mean, our experience really has been with Eurolift and Resume, and I think those two technologies really probably have the longest data in terms of efficacy. Um, but, you know, there's other things. Prostatic artery embolization has been around for a long time. It's probably fallen out of favor a little bit now. Aquablation is up and coming. Um, the Optilume system is up and coming. And then there's the true minimally invasive options like ITINT. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a variety of options and I think that's why this, this term of super pill has come about, you know, it's now, these have evolved over the last uh, decade or so and, um, you know, we can never compare them to a TERP. TERP's been the gold standard, it's been around for decades, we have such long-term good data from the efficacy of a TERP. Um, so, you know, these are young technologies and it will take more time to, to show long-term efficacy. Um, but these, you know, it's really taken over. Absolutely, absolutely. So in your opinion, what's your favorite or the, the, the procedure that you uh, perform the most? Probably Eurolift, um, you and know, in the that? appropriate patient. Um, I mean, I think it's a very simple um, outpatient sort of technology to learn. Uh, it definitely has minim um, um, limitations, you know, in patients have big median lobes or very large prostates, or if they have complications due to, um, due to their BPH, like um, hematuria or retention, then I probably wouldn't consider this for, the, for those patients um, but otherwise I think it's very well tolerated um, resume is also carrying a lot of favor again we've got some long-term data um, what we're really lacking is data that compares head-to-head -head mist versus pharmacotherapy uh, yeah. for their efficacy um, we do now have some cost effectiveness trials and we yeah. know that you know if, if patients have a minimally invasive option and they don't get recurrence of symptoms in the long term that's probably the most cost effective Absolutely. option uh, than long-term medical therapy although you know in the first year of treatment medical therapy would be cheaper um, but we are running the vapor trial which is comparing resume to pharmacotherapy for its efficacy and, and impact on quality of life so it'll be very interesting when that data when that data comes out but probably resume and Eurolift are, are, the, are the most common um, procedures and what is telling your gut what is about to be expected from that trial Oh, look, I, th I think we're going to, I think my gut feeling is going to show uh, that, that mist is favorable if you, if you, um, uh, if you take in, or especially all the quality of life uh, data as well. Okay. So, uh, dear friends, that was a first insight. Thanks to Dr. Epen. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you the next time.